Hey guys, it's Ryan, living in Ecuador, making videos for you. Ecuador is one of the best places to retire because the quality of living versus the cost of living is very good. It's one of the cheapest places to live in Latin America. I've been here for just over a year now, and I'm one of those people that keep track of everything they spend, every little cent. If I go for a cup of coffee, it's getting recorded into an app. And so today I'm going to break open the books, I'm going to look at the numbers, and by the end of this video, I should be able to tell you how much it costs me to live in Ecuador per month based on an entire year of living. People like this. Y'all don't know people like this. Y'all don't know people like this. Y'all don't know people like this. First note, these numbers are for one person, but I do live with my significant other, Sarsar Sar the Lovely, and it is cheaper to live with two people. So if you're a single person and you're looking to do this, you can add about 30% more because that's just the way it works out when you're by yourself. It, there's more single cost that you can't share with somebody and it's some kind of science probably. I don't, I don't know. Second note, I live in Quito. These numbers might not be accurate for everywhere in Ecuador. Rural places might be cheaper. The coast is going to be a little bit different, uh, but it'll give you an overall idea. And my last point. Let's do rapping. And my last point is that, what is my last point? Oh yeah, that's about how cheap I am. I don't want to say cheap. I don't want to say stingy. Frugal. I'm pretty frugal. We tend to move around every couple of years, so I don't want to make any major purchases because it'll just get left behind. I also decided when I was 32 that I didn't want to work for the man anymore. I didn't want to do anything that I didn't want to do, essentially. So I've been making videos. I've been just doing my hobbies and trying to make money off of them. And in order to do that, I don't make a lot of money, so I have to be very careful with my money. So that's why I keep track of my funds and things like that. So my point is, if you like fancy things, you probably won't be able to hit these numbers, but they are a good baseline. They're a good kind of basic cost of living in Ecuador. So I think you'll still find the video pretty, pretty useful. Okay, let's start things off with groceries. Groceries will ultimately depend on how much cooking you're doing, how local you go. If you're buying things that are imported, then you're gonna pay a lot more. For example, a jar of peanut butter, because they don't really eat peanut butter here, like if you want a Jif or whatever it is, uh, a jar of that is like pretty expensive because it's coming, it's getting shipped in and you have to pay a lot of import taxes here. But if you do avoid stuff like that, you can keep your grocery costs pretty low. If you make stuff from scratch, if you shop at the market, you can keep that number nice and low. We love food and we love to cook, so we do a lot of international cooking. Sometimes we'll go to the Chinese grocer and drop $50 on some stuff. But overall, right now, we're spending $348 on average per month for two people. So that's $170. Eight? No. 174 each. Okay, let's move on to accommodations. And right off the bat, there's a huge variety. You can do apartments, condos. Uh, if you don't mind living out of the city, the downtown a little bit, then you can live in a house. You're looking at about 400 to $800 per month for a place. Sounds like we got the construction trucks coming in. Depending how long you stay here, I would recommend getting a furnished place because furniture is really quite expensive to buy here. There are a few websites that you can go onto right now and check and see if there's rentals available. Uh, one of them is called Plus Valia. Uh, you can set things like, I want a parking spot, I want a pool, I want it to be furnished. So I recommend going on that, getting an idea of how much things cost according to what you're looking for. We live in a somewhat unique situation. Sarah's a school teacher and she got a job before we arrived here and they wanted everything set up for us ahead of time. So we picked out an apartment before actually seeing it in person and they had it all set up. So as soon as we got here, they could just move us in. We ended up in a really nice place. This place is like got a big terrace, beautiful views. There's a pool, there's a couple jacuzzis and it's really well furnished. So I do feel like we lucked out but at the same time, I know we can get a cheaper place and be just as happy. So I feel like we spend a little bit more than we need to on our rent, but at the same time, I'm not gonna complain about living in this beautiful place. Come on. How many 
I have seen really nice two bedroom apartments in the valley for like $500. Nevertheless, we're gonna set aside $800 or $400 each for rent. Oh, it's gonna smell like diesel and shit out here. Suckers! Next up is utilities, which I'm going to include water, electricity, phone, internet, all under that. So different apartments are gonna include different things. We have to pay electricity and internet, but not water. Water's included. If we had to pay water, it would cost only about $5 a month. Our electricity bill is around $20 to $25 a month. But the great thing about living in the area that we live in, we don't need heat, we don't need AC. If you live on the coast, you'd probably be running the AC a bit more, so that number might be up a little bit. Our internet is $28 a month. That gives us pretty good speeds and 150 gigabytes of download or upload. Now, if we go over that, we can always pay $10 more and boost it up another, I think it's another 20 gigabytes. So sometimes we do that, but usually we can stay under the 150 gigabytes. We also pay like $2 a month for trash collection. What the hell are you guys doing over here? I guess I picked a pretty good day to do this because they're gutting a building and they're literally taking one of those things and going and going and going. Uh, my cell phone. My cell phone, I pay $7 a month. It's like a combo. It it's, includes two gigabytes of data plus two gigabytes of data to use towards Facebook, Instagram, or Messenger. And it also includes unlimited use of WhatsApp, which is the app that everybody uses here. So that essentially is text messaging. I just use WhatsApp. Um, and it's also 100 minutes free of talk time, but I don't think I've called anybody for the past like five years or something. So in total, utilities comes to $35 on average per month for one person. Look at this smoke coming up now. What in the Okay, things seem to have simmered down around here, so let's continue. Uh, we're on transportation. So because of the high import tax, cars cost a lot more here. For example, a 2020 Toyota Corolla Hybrid would cost around $27,000 to buy brand new here. I believe in the States that's about $23,000 car, so $4,000 more, that's not too, too bad. Now, if you're looking for a used car, you need to know that the depreciation value is really good here. So it's essentially good if you're looking to sell your car, but bad if you're looking to buy a car. Uh, used 2010 Toyota Corolla will cost you something like $12,000 here. In America, that's like a $5,000 car probably. So the value stays really high. Uh, you might be able to sell it, in five years for $7,000 or something. Maybe it's, it's better in the long run, but um, just know that that upfront cost is gonna be a lot more for a used car than you would pay in North America. On top of that, you'll apparently spend about $150 a month for like gas and repairs and all that stuff, insurance or whatever you need for your car. Now I have a motorcycle, it's a lot cheaper. I actually have a video about buying the motorcycle that you can probably find in the description or maybe above me here. Because we have great year-round weather, it's just the perfect vehicle for me. I really love driving motorcycles. I bought one for $2,250 and that was brand new. It's a 250 Chinese brand. And as far as monthly costs go, I'm spending $26 a month for fuel and for maintenance. Uh, you gotta keep in mind that I got the bike and had to get a few documents and stuff those cost a little bit of money, plus there's more oil changes in the beginning because the engine's new, stuff like that. But the fuel here is super, super cheap. I spend about $4 a month on fuel, which is just insane. And I drive that bike quite a bit. I, I drove it down to the coast and back. I've done road trips around. So I am going through the miles a little bit quicker than I normally would if I was just taking it to the store and back. But by far the cheapest way to get around is by bus. We actually have a bus stop right out in front of our place and it, it's a, for a bus route that goes between the valley and Quito. And if I want to go into the valley or into Quito, it costs me 25 cents. So super cheap and it's really easy, quick. There's a lot of buses frequently, like every like five minutes, I'd say max, I would have to wait for a bus. If you're looking to go a long distance on the bus, I've noticed it usually costs around a dollar per hour of travel. So from here to Otavala, maybe two hours, it'll cost like two bucks. If you are interested in taking a taxi, they also have Uber here and something called Cabify. If I wanna to go to Quito downtown right now, 
It's about eight kilometers away. It would take about 15 minutes and cost me about $3.50. So when it comes to transportation, taxis and buses, I'm spending about $13 a month. And then the bike is another 26 for a total of $39 a month for transportation. So the next category I'm just calling going out, which sounds like a, a bad 90s sitcom or something. Going out includes going out for meals, for a couple pints, a movie, concert, basically any time we go out and do something in the city or whatever. And I can actually break these down a little bit into different categories as well. I'll start with eating out, which I'm averaging $60 a month, so about $2 a day. Eating out in Ecuador can be very expensive, but it can also be very cheap. You go out for a lunch and you pay about $2.50 for like a soup. Uh, main, a drink, usually a fresh juice, and sometimes a dessert as well, and it really fills you up. So if you eat like the Ecuadorians do, which is big lunch, small dinner, then you can save a lot of money going out and just getting these little almuerzos, they're called, which essentially means lunch, and then just have a small dinner like an empanada or a sandwich or something. So if you don't like to cook, it is possible to eat out for all your meals and still not spend too, too much money. But of course, we'll go out for pizza, Chinese food, tacos, or whatever, and those things are a bit more money than Ecuadorian food. Because I work from home, every once in a while I like to get out of the house and do some work out in a cafe, so I'll go out for coffee, and that category, I actually have a separate subcategory for coffee. I spend about $1.50 per coffee, and usually end up spending about $6.50 a month on that. My last category is entertainment, which is basically any unnecessary outing just for fun, uh, movie, concert, going out for beers, and actually that is the one I spend the most on. Sarah and I, we like a good craft beer. There are a ton of good craft beer places around and they'll cost from $3 at happy hour to $5 regular price for a, a pint of craft beer. So we do that quite often. I also love to go to the movies. So I'll go to maybe a movie every two weeks and each time it's only about $4 because I go on the cheapest day. So I spend about $8 on movies per month. The total for entertainment is $32.45 a month, and the entire total for the whole category of going out is $98.95 a month, which is higher than I thought it would be, but you should, you should really try the stouts here. They're, they're pretty awesome. My last category I'm calling others, and it's basically just anything I needed to buy for the house, any clothing I needed. I bought a new cell phone while I was here. Um, also, like frying pan, um, stuff like that. My total for that comes to $45.38 per month, but you have to keep in mind that we did move to a new country, so there were things that we needed to buy just to make the place feel like our home. I should also add that that doesn't include the purchase of my motorcycle. Because of the import tax, you're gonna spend a lot more on items here that are not built here. So anything that they brought in is about 25% more, maybe actually a little bit more. So I'm basically holding off on buying things, like there's a few electronics I need, I'm gonna wait till I go back to Canada to get them and then bring them back in. The only other thing I spend money on is travel, which I'm not gonna include in my monthly total, but I'll throw the numbers at you just so you have an idea. In the past year, we've taken a couple week-long vacations and a bunch of weekend vacations for a total of 34 nights outside of the house. Those trips cost a total of $790 or $23 per night per person. And that includes the accommodation, any attractions we might've went to, and honestly, probably a, quite a few meals, especially if we ate them in the hotel or the hostel. So those are my numbers. And I'll just roughly add them up in my head. I don't have the number written off screen at all. So I'm doing this entirely in my head and carry the 14, you got $792.33 in total per month on average. So that's more than I thought it would be, but it's pretty easy to spend more here because there's kind of a bigger upper class and there's a lot more high-end stuff that kind of draws me in. Uh, I think I could shave off some money if we moved to a different place, just you know, really took our time to find a place that was a good value. 
But overall, Ecuador is, in my opinion, one of the best bang for your buck places to live. The weather here is just beautiful. The views that we get, you just you can't put a price on that stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope that you don't have hemorrhoids. And make sure you subscribe, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, give me all that good stuff. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Prefer when I'm by myself. I don't wanna hang around y'all. Pray for good health. One day I'm gonna go mall. Fuck around and buy the whole mall. Breaking that cake. Texas have a hundred in the bank. Not a superhero, I'm safe. Look at my face. Look at my grace. Don't match up, no love.